when the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, was commissioned as a messenger, conveying from his Lord, he brought in a message that brought all goodness. It brought justice. It expanded the concept and definition of justice to encompass and include all creatures, including animals. And it forbade mistreatment of animals because these are creatures that Allah Azza wa, Azza, Azza wa Jal subjected for the service of mankind. and to regulate the relationship between mankind and animals. Allah Azza wa Jal set a number of rights due to animals so that the relationship between mankind and animals is controlled. Amongst these rights is showing mercy towards animals. The Prophet وسلم, and this is reported by Imam Muslim, said, if you travel through a fertile land, then slow down and give the animals time to graze. But if you happen to travel during a time of drought, then hasten in your journey. Al-Imam al-Nawawi, when explaining this hadith, said these are instructions by the Prophet ﷺ to show mercy to animals. When you give it time to graze, when, when it's a fertile land, then first of all you give it the right to feed. You fulfill that. And you also Make it strong enough so it can tolerate the rest of the journey. Whereas during times of drought, it will find nothing to graze on. And therefore, hastening is for the interest of that animal. Otherwise, if you slow down, it takes longer. The animal becomes hungry and thus weak and cannot tolerate. One time Aisha anha, and this is also reported by Muslim, was riding a camel and it was a, a tough, rough animal, difficult to control. That camel was difficult to control. So she was, she was radiallahu anha, jiggling that animal, making it walk and then suddenly stopping it. The Prophet sallallahu said to her, show mercy to the animal. So showing mercy to animals, is one of the rights. Maintaining their uh, dignity, you say, this is only for humans. No, it is also for animals. That's why the Prophet وسلم, and this is reported by Muslim, forbade from striking the face of the animal. Scholar said, this is because it humiliates that animal when you strike it on the face. We are also forbidden from taking these animals or birds, any living thing, as targets to play with. The Prophet ﷺ forbade setting animals or birds, any living creature, as a target to shoot arrows at for no reason but for entertainment. This is haram. But when we have to kill, and this is the fourth right, when we must kill, then we must show kindness. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is also reported by Muslim, in Allah katab al ihsana ala kulli shay. Allah enjoined kindness in all affairs, in all matters. 
So this is the general rule. And then he وسلم, specified the animals. He said, so when you slaughter, show kindness. When you're slaughtering, how? He said, sharpen the blade and put that animal to rest. Because if the blade is dull, it'll take long for the animal to be killed or slaughtered and therefore experience pain and suffering. Show me any religion that gives these rights to animals, subhanAllah. However, the principle of the matter is that the animal has the right to remain alive and preserve its frogging and breathe. Animals have this right. They have the right to remain alive and to preserve their breeds. That's why the Prophet ﷺ forbade castrating animals. Because it will eventually vanish. However, when there is a benefit from putting an end to an animal's life, like benefiting from the animal, eating it, using its skin, then this is permissible. That's why we slaughter cows and sheep and goats and so on. Or when there's an expected harm from an animal, then yes, we are permitted to kill such animals. And this is reported by Imam Ahmed classified as authentic by an Almighty. Now, Allah Azza wa put these animals to service, but they have the right to be fed and to rest. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day walked into a garden of one of the people of Al-Ansar from Medina. And as he walked, he saw a camel. When the camel saw the Prophet وسلم, it walked up to him. And it started crying. So the Prophet he walked up to it and wiped its tears. And then he turned around and he said, who's the owner of this camel? So a young man from the Ansar walked up and he said, I am its owner. He said, don't you fear Allah Azza wa Jal in this animal whom Allah Azza wa Jal gave you ownership over? It complained to me that you don't feed it enough. You make it hungry and you overburden it with the loads you carry on it. Allah Alhamdulillah for Islam. Wallahi, if Allah Azza wa Jal did not bestow upon us any favor except that He made us Muslims, it will be sufficient that we prostrate until the Day of Judgment. We have to be considerate to the feelings of these creatures. In the book of Al Imam Bukhari, Al Adab al Mufrat, and it's classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet was traveling once on a journey, and then they stopped to rest. And then after a while, a bird was flying and it came above the head of the Prophet and started flapping its wings. Then the Prophet turned to the companions and said, Who scared this bird with its eggs? The man said, I did. I took its eggs. He said, 
bring it back, show mercy, be considerate of the feelings of this, of this spirit. A lot of us have no consideration for humans' feelings, let alone animals and birds. We're not allowed, uh, and this is something that is widespread in the world. We are forbidding from making animals fight each other, such as bullfight, dog fights, rooster fights. You know, thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of birds and animals yearly die because of, as a result of, these fights. In the book of Al Bukhari, Al Adab al Mufrid, I classify this sound by Al Albani. Ibn Umar forbade such practice. And Nawawi said, it is haram. Al Shawkani said, the reason for the prohibition is that it results in pain, it afflicts pain on the animal. And people usually do this either to make money out of it or just to enjoy themselves. This is not on the account of the safety and life of these creatures. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul When one fulfills these rights is conscious of them he gains a lot First, he gains the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla. In the book of Al Imam Bukhari Al Adab Al Mufrad, classified as sound by Al Albani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Man rahima walau zabihatan, rahimahu Allah yom al Whoever is merciful, even with an animal that is set to be slaughtered." Then Allah Azza wa Jal would be merciful with him on the day of judgment. Another great benefit of fulfilling and being conscious of these rights is gaining the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal and attaining. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet informed us about a prostitute. Who saw a dog going around the well, a well of water, on a summer day with its tongue hanging down out of thirst. So it pitied that dog. So it went down, filled its shoe, came up, and gave it drink. So Allah is a gentle gate. This is a prostitute. However, if we're not mindful of these rights, if we neglect these rights, if we mistreat animals, then beware. Number one, punishment in hell. In the book of an Imam Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, told us about a woman who kept a cat in a room, closed the door on it, and did not give it food and drink. And it died. So Allah Azza wa Jal punished her in the fire of hell. It neither gave it food or drink, nor allowed it to go out and find its food. So it was deserving. She was deserving to be punished in hell. Another warning from the Prophet وسلم, is that a person can become deserving of the curse of Allah Azza wa Jalla in certain situations.
situations when he violates the rights of animals. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, walked, walked by and saw a donkey that was branded on its face. Branding in Islam is okay for certain reasons and if it's justifiable, it's got, it's got its justifications, but it cannot be on the face. It is haram on the face. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw it, he said, Who did this? May Allah curse the one who did this. In the book of Imam Muslim, Ibn Umar walked one day on a group of people who had set a chicken as a target and started shooting it. When they saw Ibn Umar walking up, they ran away. So he couldn't recognize them. He said, who did this? The Prophet ﷺ cursed the one who does this. Islam is a code of life. It's a way of living. It's not merely a set of rituals going to the mosque and coming out of the mosque. If this is our understanding of Islam, then it is extremely limited and it's wrong. Islam is about everything in this life from the time a person can ration and then after that held accountable until that person dies. And it's related to one's relations and interactions with everything around him, whether humans or otherwise. We ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings and to pardon us for whatever we violated from the rights he has subscribed to humans and otherwise. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma afir lana dhubana wa israfana fi amrina. Allahumma afir lana taqsirana fi uqoot ghayrina. Allahumma afir lana.